When they got back to the house, Ford told Jathan and Thierry to take it easy the rest of the day. Thierry seemed to open to it, or maybe he was still lethargic. But at least he installed himself on the couch and was asleep within minutes. Jathan took a little longer, and Ford tried not to hover as the boy padded through the house, examining everything, looking like a lost boy without his parents. Ford's entire heart went out to him. How he wished he could do more for them. He'd have to call on every ounce of patience he had. That much had become clear. Finally, Jathan found a spot in a reading chair, his legs curled up under him. Cradling his left arm, he leafed through a comic book. But half an hour later, he too was asleep. Ford used the time to place a grocery order, working down the list of healthy foods Martha had given him, lots of fruit, which he always had available anyway, and other than that, Light foods for the first two weeks. Rice, lean proteins, easy vegetables. It had surprised him both boys had given her permission to share their medical results with him. She'd gone over everything she had discovered so far, which included her suspicion of a rotator cuff injury for Jathan. He'd need an MRI to diagnose that. Ford had already called the hospital to set up an appointment. She'd run blood panels on them both and had promised she'd call with the results as soon as she had them. Jathan had gotten upset when she said that, reminding Ford that Robin was supposed to stop by with a phone. Why hadn't he? Ford checked his phone, which he had switched to silent at the doctor's. Robin had sent him a message that he'd gotten delayed by a case, but that Ford could pick up the phone from the police station. Ford texted Robin and asked him to stop by later that day. The cop responded immediately that he would. Once the grocery order was done, Ford went online at Kohl's, his go-to store for quick clothing needs, and he ordered a whole range of things for both boys. Socks, underwear, comfortable pants, t-shirts and hoodies, even winter jackets, gloves and hats. He'd forgotten to ask them for their shoe size, but he could buy some sneakers when he picked up his order. He could have it delivered, but that would take much longer. After checking the boys were still asleep, he called John. The club owner had messaged him earlier that day, and Ford had promised to give him an update. And while he had no intention of sharing anything personal, he appreciated John's concern. How are they doing? John asked as soon as he picked up. As well as can be expected, I think. Martha checked them out, and she discovered some more issues we'll need to pay attention to. Oh, good. I'm glad you reached out to her. John didn't ask for details. Not that Ford had expected him to. The man knew better. From what I can tell, it's as bad as you'd thought. But the boys are not forthcoming with details so far. John let out a sigh. <sighs> I wouldn't expect him to be. God knows what that despicable excuse for a human being taught them. Patterns reinforced by violence are notoriously hard to break. It'll be a challenge for sure. Thierry still doesn't talk, and there seems to be quite a bit of animosity between Jathan and Thierry. Really? That surprises me. I would think they would have grown close, having a common enemy, so to speak. Ford hummed in agreement. I don't know what's behind it, yet. Something else I hope to find out over time. It will be a long road to recovery for them, if they ever fully recover from an experience this traumatic. You should see them, John, Ford said, his voice dropping to a whisper. They're so frail and thin. It breaks my heart. I just want to cuddle them and tell them everything will be okay, but I can't. You're a good man, Ford. All I can say is trust your instincts in this. Ford shook his head, even though John couldn't see it. My instincts are useless here. As much experience as I have with different kinds of subs, this is far beyond anything I've seen. I wouldn't know where to start. 